Okay, hi everybody. Uh, we're waiting for CJ to get on. So I will quickly want to say welcome to everyone. Our, to this uh, medical billing company owner mastermind meeting. I'm really excited about our meeting today. Most of you on the call already know me, but for those that don't, my name is Hani Gluck. I am the CEO and founder of 4D Global. 4D Global helps medical billing companies grow and scale their business by, utilize, by utilizing our offshore team for coding, data entry, revenue cycle management, reporting, and analytics. Our monthly free learning sessions are designed to do just that, help you grow and scale your business. Since we dedicated our second quarter of the year to operations, as you remember, we focused on marketing in Q1. I thought that introducing the EOS system, which is based on the book Traction by Gina Wickman, would benefit every business owner as it did for my own businesses. So I read Traction many years ago and applied a lot of the things that I learned to my billing company, 4D Medical, which I sold a few years ago. I think I got the price that I wanted when I sold because of all the documentation that I did after reading the book. And I still run my weekly management meetings based on the EOS system. For those of you that have not had time to read Traction, I've included an 18-page summary under your control panel. On the right-hand side of your screen, you'll see a section called Handouts, and uh, you can read that when you have the time. So just to give you some background about how today came about, uh, back in January, I reached out to Gina Wickman's office and was connected with CJ. CJ is an EOS implementer. She's worked with close to 100 companies, over 1,000 all-day sessions. She charges about $7,000 a day to come to your office and assist with implementing EOS. She was gracious enough to give us 90 minutes of her time today and introduce you to the EOS system and to teach us all something that we can take back to our businesses today. So without further ado, I wanna introduce CJ. And uh, we're having, CJ's having a little bit of technical difficulties in showing her screen. So I think I'm gonna take over this PowerPoint. Um, and uh, CJ, go ahead. Good afternoon, everyone, and uh, thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. I'm excited to share my knowledge, my experience, and help in any way I can to uh, show you, share with you EOS, Entrepreneurial Operating System. And I'll kind of just walk us through all these slides. I will actually move fairly quickly through them. But here we go. So the way I like to start is... Oftentimes, when I, if you envision yourself in a big room with 100 people and I'm doing a keynote, I always say, look to the person to your right and look to the person to your right and say, goodbye, adios, au revoir. So I know that's just a bit of humor, but the reason why I do that is because if I do my job well in the next 90 minutes, I'm going to give you a whole new way to look at your business. So moving us forward, looking at slide number four, Gino, I just want to share with you a little bit about Gino. So Gino was the entrepreneur at the age of 25, took over the family business and turned that business around, had a love for teaching. He also was one of the leading founding members of Entrepreneurs Organization in Detroit. And what he discovered was there were some entrepreneurs that did things amazingly well and other entrepreneurs that, eh, not so much. But the common theme was there were five frustrations that most, many entrepreneurs had. And those five frustrations, which are on slide four, are control. So control is about the business running you versus you running the business. I'm sure many of you can relate to that. Profit, or shall I say lack thereof profit. And I'll tell you that there's many businesses that I start with and I'm working with and they actually feel good about their top line revenue, 
but they're not feeling so great about their profit. So a lot of growth means working on profit. And the third frustration is people, employees, vendors, clients, they're just getting frustrated with people. The fourth frustration is about hitting the ceiling. And we all have different moments of hitting the ceiling and, and we need to learn how to break through those ceilings. But the, these entrepreneurs are just hitting the ceiling. And how do you learn how to break through them? That's frustrating them. Then the fifth frustration is nothing's working. Or how I say it, flavor of the month. In other words, you watch a seminar or you listen to a speech and you have great ideas and you bring it back and you plug this in or you plug that in or you lose interest in it and it goes away quickly. But really what we're doing is we are driving our employees nuts. So those are the five frustrations. In EOS, we want to be able to help provide you with real simple results. There are three main things that we're always focused on. Vision, traction, and healthy. So vision from the perspective of getting everyone on the same page, moving in the same direction. But that's not only where are you going, but how. How are you going to get there? And traction is execution results and making things happen. Healthy is about being a cohesive leadership team, all working together for the greater good of the business. Wanting to move us forward, I want to start with what we call the six key components. So out of the 136 things that you have going on in your weeks, your months, your years, all those things, they can compartmentalize into one of these six key components. The vision component. The vision component is about getting everyone 100% moving in the same direction. So if that's 40 employees, that's 40 out of 40 employees all knowing where you're going. If it's 100, it's 100 out of 100 employees all knowing where you're going. And the people component is great companies have great people. We've been hearing that saying for years and years and years. The reality is a great person for your company down the street is not a great person for your business. So there's a couple of tools in each one of these components. Then you have the data component. And the data component is about taking all the subjective all the theory, all those things out of it. I like to call it taking the emotion out. When I was growing one of my businesses from zero to eight million, I ran a lot of, I had a lot of salespeople and they'd say to me, okay, I'm gonna make my month. And I'd go, um, okay, what elephant is showing up for you this month? But my point is that it just helps by looking at the numbers, looking at our data helps to tell the story. Once we get the vision component and the people component and the data component all humming, all cruising, all these things start to bubble to the surface and now we have issues. The issues component is about getting things out of our head and knocking them out one at a time. The process component is an area that most leaders, managers, owners are not necessarily always very good at. And really the reason why is because we already know how to do it. So it's in our head and we just know how to do it. We need to learn how to get things out of our head. Then there's the traction component. Traction is about execution, results, and making things happen. Vision without traction is hallucination. I'm hoping all of you are laughing at this point. Uh, in the middle of these six key components, is your business okay so just think of this your business is in the middle of all six key components our goal here is to get you to a hundred percent in each one of the six key components reality is that might be utopia so we want to absolutely get to 80 percent strong in each one of these six key components 
most companies that I start with are at about 30%. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to walk through each one of the components and there are two tools in each one of the six key components. The vision component, the first tool is what we call the eight questions. The eight questions are your core values, core focus, 10-year target, marketing strategy, three-year picture, one-year plan, rocks, and issues list. All of the eight questions are on what we call the vision traction organizer, which is slide 10. And we go to core values is the first question on the vision traction organizer. Our core values are the characteristics that describe your business. They're the heart and the soul of your business. When I'm working with my teams, we do a couple of exercises to flush out your core values. And to be honest, it's a term that so many people use. It's in the high schools, it's everywhere. And not to make it, I don't want to minimize it because we really believe core values are so important. We want to be able to hire to them, fire to them, and mentor and motivate by our core values. And again, the tool that we use with that is the people analyzer tool. One of the exercises I do when I'm helping to flush out discovering that you have the right people is for all my teams, what they do is, is and a team, a leadership team is typically three to seven people. And what you're doing is you're thinking of three superstars, you're listing their attributes, and then you really work on narrowing it down to what you believe are the three to seven most important values for you as a business. It helps to define your culture. And what you can see is avoids value traps. Value traps, there's three of them. There's permission to play. Permission to play is simply means words that just about everybody uses. So oftentimes for me, that word is professional because it means different things to different businesses and different people. I'll give you an example though. One of my companies did choose to use the word professional, but the value was professional in an unprofessional industry. And really what they did is they did low bid work and they would like in a county plant 250 trees, for example. So that's permission to play and just thinking about the words that you're using. Aspirational is a value that just show that you choose, but do you really have it? Is it something that we really do live by, use all the time? Um, I had a team early on. Um, one of the first years, and I've been doing this eight years, and they had the value fun. The reality was, is they really weren't all that fun. They just had a difficult situation in the business going from father to son, and they were very stoic. Um, but every quarter, someone would say, okay, so why is our value fun? And really, what happened was, one day, the operational leader said, well, we have fun when Ken is gone. Ken happened to be the son. Ken was so serious about driving the business, getting growth, that he kind of lost, he was so focused and, and so serious with everyone, he didn't see the value in having a good time with people as well. And it really, the funny part of the story is the operation leader says, well, we have cupcakes when you're gone. And it turned into this amazing, great dialogue that they clearly opened up. They tweaked the value. And they realized they were being a little bit aspirational with it. But they came to such an amazing place as a team just working through that value. Accidental is a value that sometimes happens with 
generation changes like there's value that shows up and it's always been there and they didn't purposely put it there or another way of an accidental value is when you purchase a company or you have multiple locations sometimes multiple locations you realize they value something in one location that wasn't purposely meant to be there so that's values at any point, Ani, if anybody has any questions, please let me know, and I'm happy to pause and answer anything that anyone has. I'm completely open to interaction here. Okay, so if anyone has any questions at any point, you can just put your question in the chat box, and um, I will will pause uh, in about, let's give it another 15 minutes. And Yep. Okay. Sounds great. Thanks, Ani. Um, so going to core focus, core focus is your sweet spot. It's what you do better than anybody else. And it's also meant to prevent the shiny things. So what I really liken it to, I don't know if any of you are golfers out there, but I golf. And I have a driver that's quite large, but in the middle of that driver is one little sweet spot. And if I hit my driver well, I can hit it 200. If I miss, it's either dribbling off to the front or ending up in the desert. The point of that is, is we need to be able to be super laser focused and hit the sweet spot. So our purpose, cause, or passion is why we do what we do. We want to come up with a clear, concise statement that says why we do what we do. It has nothing to do with money. It's truly what gets us out of bed every day and why we do what we do. And the niche is about what we do and being crystal clear on what we do. And that's there to make sure that we're not headed off into directions that is not 100% of what we want our focus to be. That's our core focus, oftentimes called mission statement, vision statement, sometimes hedgehog concept. Dan Sullivan calls it unique ability. So it's called different things in different ways, not to give you another term. We just believe it comes from the core. Ten-year target. Ten-year target is similar to big, hairy, audacious goal which comes out of Jim Collins' book, Good to Great. We simply say 10-year target because on average, that is what our company choose. But there's two rules to choosing your 10-year target. One is time frame. So you can go anywhere from five to 30 years. So it could be a seven-year target, a five-year target, a 20-year target. I have companies that have seven. I have companies that have 12. It's just you choose the time frame. And then it's one thing. It's one thing out in the future that you want. Many times I see revenue, but sometimes it's number of units. Sometimes it's a comparison to something that they can validate and prove because you want it to be quantitative and qualitative at the same time. So that is your 10-year target. Moving down to, I want to go here, I'm going to scoot, <coughs> scoot down a few slides here. Going to your marketing strategy. Marketing strategy is on, still on the vision. Marketing strategy has four things in it. Your target market the list. So think of the target market your list of as who you want to talk to. So who do you want to talk to? The demographic, geographic, psychographic of your client. So who are they, where are they, and how do they think, okay? It's narrowing in, again, to keep you laser focused. Who are they, where are they, and how do they think? Operating off of that target market, the list. Then you have your three uniques, your three uniques are your differentiators. The three things combined that make you better than your competition. So what are the three things? Competition might have one, 
maybe two, maybe even two, but they do not have all three things combined. Okay, your proven process, 50% of our clients have a proven process, 50% of our clients do not have a proven process. You just decide what yours is. I'm happy to share mine at the end if you'd like. Guarantee, good example for guarantee is FedEx guarantees their packages by 10 a.m. the next morning. Or uh, if you think of some of you who might remember Domino's Pizza, they would guarantee you a pizza for free if they didn't deliver it in 30 minutes, so thinking of it that way. But again, not everybody has a guarantee. That is our marketing strategy. Moving to three-year picture, three-year picture is not to go all zen on you, but to our ability to get things out of our head and onto paper, the universe comes around us and helps us get things done. So we want to be able to look at our three-year picture and say three short years from now. So if you think of it now, it would be like two and a half, but 2020, December 31st of 2020, what would your revenue be? What would your profit be? And what is the one to two key measurables that you want to measure? So again, you're thinking about potentially units or something like that that is giving you if you hit those measurables you'll be able to help hit your revenue and help you hit your profit and then what it looks like is 10 to 20 things that you believe you need to have in place in the next three years in that year it's 10 to 20 things so it's anything from potentially a new building software key hires key accounts a new division, an acquisition. It's any of those things that you want to get out of your head and we want to get them onto paper so we can see to the future. And I think we all could agree that three years goes pretty darn fast. That's the vision page. Now I'm going to start taking us down to the ground to the traction page of the VTO. Your one-year plan, I'm taking you down to the ground here, in the next 12 months, if your calendar fiscal year, it'd be the end of this year, but whatever your next 12 months, it is what's your revenue, what's your profit, and what are the one to two key measurables that you must be measuring. And now it's not the 23 things that you need to get done in the next 12 months, but what is the three to seven most important things that you get done in the next 12 months? You want to be able to write those goals for the year, and you want to be able to write them smart, which what I mean by that is specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and timely. That's your one-year plan. Then we go to rocks. Rocks is about living your business on a 90-day window, okay? So the term rocks comes from Stephen Covey's book, First Things First. But what I'm teaching is to live your business on a 90-day window because what happens to every leader, manager, even employee is we set goals and then we get tired every 75 to 90 days. And we oftentimes lose track of that goal. We need to come back together every 90 days and think about what are the three to seven most important things that I need to get done in the next 90 days. Oftentimes those rocks are written off of your goals that you wrote for the year. Sometimes not always there's something else. But also in that 90 day window, what do you predict? What are you planning and committing to for revenue, for profit, and measurables? Those are your rocks. Issues list is simply about getting everything that we need to identify, is getting things out of our head, 
on the paper so it's a concern, problem, <laughs> obstacle, but it's also ideas, opportunities, anything that we have in our head to help us with our business. We want to get out of our head and onto the issues list. So that is the eight questions in the vision component. Shared by all is the second tool. We want to be able to be transparent and share those eight questions, the answers to those questions, the VTO, with all of our employees. So if it's 40 employees, we want to get 40 out of 40 employees. I'll know where we're going and how we're going to get there. If it's 100, it's 100 employees all knowing where we're going and how we're going to get there. Are we good to keep moving, honey, or did you want to offer up questions? Does anybody have questions on the traction component or the vision component? I'm sorry. I think everybody is just uh, stuck on the con on hanging on the content. So I, I'd like to get through the content if we can, but uh, everybody I'll feel free to ask the questions, but uh, this is great. You're doing great. All right, I'll keep cruising. I have a tendency, and if I'm talking too fast, alert me. I'm trying not to. You're doing great. You're doing great. <laughs> I have a tendency to talk fast. Okay, people component, 100% strong, and the people component is right people, right seats. Right people ties directly into our core values, and the tool that we use in right people is the people analyzer so that's number 23 we just go through the people analyzer you can see that i have a little bit of an example and some funny people's names up there i got jane wright and john payne and andy cited what you see at the top are the eos worldwide core values be humbly confident grow or die help first do the right thing and do what you say so the plus minus and plus minus that you're seeing plus is 90 percent of the time that person shows up with our values they have our values minus is 50 percent or less they just don't have those values they just don't want to help first they maybe don't want to grow or die which is john's situation as in my example and andy uh andy sometimes yes and sometimes no so you can think of that as 70-30. 70% of the time he is, 30%, yeah, I gotta keep reeling him back in. We always create a bar. So for the example, if you have five core values, you want the majority of them to be pluses. In my example, it's three pluses and two plus minuses. But we always wanna be using our people analyzer to help us to hire, fire, and mentor our employees by when I'm talking about right seats I'm going directly to the tool that we call the accountability chart the accountability chart it's on 24 the accountability chart is we start with the basic belief that there are three main functions in every business there's a sales and marketing function an operations function and a finance function sometimes these seats split out and you have i'll go to 25 will give us an example so you look at the function and you think a sales management is the function in every single seat we have three to seven roles and responsibilities in every seat. In this example, I have five. So I have five roles and responsibility in the sales management function. And you put the person's name in that seat. Only one person can sit in a seat, but sometimes you can have one person sitting in more than one seat. In every seat, when we use, we have a tool that's called GWC. GWC stands for get it, want it, capacity to do it. Get it is just the person's God-given talent to do it. Do it. They see it, they get it, 
It's their God-given talent. Want it is they show up every day wanting the seat. They even tap you on the shoulder and they say, help me, help me, where do I improve? They want it, show energy and passion. Capacity is the mental, physical, emotional, spiritual skill, skill capacity to do the job. And oftentimes time capacity shows up as well. We need to look at the roles and responsibilities in the seat. Every seat, looking at how much time is allowed to do that seat. Some seats are 20 hours a week, some are 40, some might be 55. To be honest, I'm a 55 a week person. I actually own a couple of seats myself, but that's about my <coughs> bandwidth to work. So you want to have the answer to get it, want it capacity is yes 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 so scrolling down to right seats you see the people analyzer again and at the end of the people analyzer you put in get it want it capacity to do it you can see jane absolutely she gets it she wants it she has capacity jane is none of it john i should say is none of it he doesn't get it he doesn't want it and it shows in his capacity andy actually does get it he just doesn't want the seat, even though he has the capacity to do it. And I think we can all think of experiences where we have people that quite honestly, they get the seat, they even are really skilled at it and have the capacity, but they just some don't really want it. We have to think about every one of those pieces. So back to the accountability chart and back to, I, I normally would skip back to 24 but let's just, let me just say in every, every company, there's the seat that we call the integrator seat. The integrator is the person who is harmoniously running the business on a day to day, week to week, month to month basis. When you read the book Traction, sometimes people think there's always a visionary and there's not. I have companies where the owner is an integrator and not a visionary. A visionary by the nature of who they are, they are the person that has 20 ideas a week, but only one of them's any good. But the one that's good, that's the one that hits it out of the park. The visionary has all the big relationships. The visionary is banking relationship, vendor relationship, client relationships. They have all the big relationships. They are also very involved in research and development. They're a lot of the idea person. They're making sure they get things through. The visionary, not always, but oftentimes is a little ADD. I think we can all think of people who might fit that. And then though the visionary is the person who if there's a problem or a crisis, they're the first on the scene and they're the quickest and the fastest to be able to get to solve. Where there are great visionaries in places where businesses grow the best, they really grow quickly and, and it works even better when they have a solid integrator working with them. So the visionary and the integrator's personalities are almost like bipolar opposite because your integrator is structured, organized, methodical, knows how to be the glue to hold the business together, to hold that leadership team together. Moving to the full accountability chart, you take it all the way down to the ground to every single seat that you have in the business. Every seat has a function. You take titles out of everything, and every seat has three to seven roles and responsibilities in the seat. So 100% strong is core values, accountability chart, people analyzer, core values, GWC. There are two issues that happen. There, what happens is we have a right, right person, wrong seat issue. The right person is someone that you just absolutely love and adore, but the seats become too big or the seats become too small. So 
you either need to find them another seat and if you do not have one and i was with you and you are a for-profit business i would convince you that person can no longer be in your business even though you love and adore them the second problem is issue is you have someone who's extremely skilled at what they do they're very good at what they do but they're just always they don't match your core values they're always rubbing wrong with people something just isn't matching i had a personal situation where that i was growing my business from zero to eight million and i had one person the first year it's like he's hitting it out of the park or it seems like it he's bringing in a lot of revenue he's just you know helping everything to grow but there it came down to he could not play fair in the sandbox if his life depended on it I had clients called me I had I was placing people to be honest so I had candidates calling me and it was kind of like strike one strike two strike three his comment to me was you can't fire me this business will go down and I went well it's not working so I let him go and what happened the rest of my team came up to the plate with me and we hit it out of the park. So you really want to passionately say you have the right people and the right seats. You need both. And that's 100% strong in the people component. Moving to the data component. The data component, again, is about taking the emotion out, building a scorecard. A scorecard, you've heard um, dashboard, we've heard key performance indicators, it's called many different things. We call it the scorecard. Measurables to me is like key performance indicators. We just get everything to common language. So what are the measurables that you want to measure? What are the five to 15 things a leadership team needs to know to know their business is on track. This is back to running our business on a 90 day window. We are looking 13 weeks at a glance so we can see the trends in our business. So we know what's happening. I can show you a couple examples. They are on 33. So you've got some sales and marketing examples, some operations examples and some finance examples. Every area has some key measurables that need to be measured. Then you have to say, what is the goal for that measurable? What is the goal number that you want for that measurable, whether it's a number or a percentage? Then you move to who. Who owns that number? So every, and it's not who calculates the number for you, but Clearly, who owns the number for you? That is living our business on a 90-day window. You look at 13 weeks at a glance just so you can see the trends of what is going on and what's happening in your business. Then you look back at your accountability chart, tying it to measurables, Every single seat has a number in it. So the second tool is measurables. It's scorecard and then measurables. So even a receptionist knows she needs to answer that phone in two rings. That's the data component, scorecard and measurables. I'm going to go to once again, once we get the vision component and the people component and the data component all humming, all these things start to bubble to the surface. And I'm going to go a little bit faster now. The issues component, there are two tools in the issues component. The first is the list. The list is about getting everything out of our head and onto paper. It's something I'm actually quite passionate about. It's a, like we need to be brave enough to be able to put whatever there is, any idea, opportunity, concern, problem, obstacle, out on the table so we can break it down. 
So we get it out. That's the leadership team issues, every department issues, tactical issues, cultural issues. We're looking to get everything out of our head and onto the paper. Then we go to IDS, which stands for Identify, Discuss, and Solve. As you can see, I have a few circles around discuss because that is the one that we do the most. We discuss the same issue for days, for weeks, for months, for years, we discuss the same issues. We need to get really masterful at identifying it, putting it out, peeling it back, getting to the root cause of an issue. Then we need to be able to discuss it and discuss what does solve look like for today? How do I get to solve? And we need to be able to solve it to move it forward. On the right side, you can see the issues list and we've prioritized them one, two, three. So we wanna be able to say, what are our priorities that we tackle first? We could have 10 things on this list, we could have 20. But we need to take the most important, not just low hanging fruit for our issues. Bringing us back to the full component of the issues component, that's the list, getting everything out of our head and getting masterful at IDSing our issues. Going to the process component. The process component is documenting. We wanna be able to come up with your way of doing business business. So core processes are these handful of processes that you want to document the 20% that's getting you the 80% of your results. So examples are HR process, marketing process, sales. Most teams have more than one operational process. What is your accounting process and potentially customer service? But you identify your handful of core processes, and then think linear, and what are the steps inside the process that you're documenting the 20% that's getting you the 80% of your results? Because those big, huge manuals, oftentimes process manuals, usually end up on a shelf. The second tool in the process component is what we call followed by all. Followed by all means just that. The word by is a huge word. It's not with, it's by. It's I own my part of the process. It's by me. I own what I need to own in the process. So followed by all is everyone's moving in the same directions. I oftentimes say the arrows are all going the same way because everyone doing it their own way doesn't work. You wanna get all those processes and everyone doing it. And it, it, this is not easy. This is one of the hardest components for teams to get to because you know how you do what you do and you just do it. But we also don't wanna be able to have handcuffs. I've had many an owner tell me, well, I can't let he or she go because she's the only one that knows how to do it. So we need to get things out of people's head and onto paper so we can all doing it the same way. And that brings us to the traction component. Traction is execution, results, making things happen. The first tool in the traction component is rocks so rocks again is on your vision traction organizer but rocks are those big things that we must get done in the next 90 days and we want to write them smart specific measurable attainable realistic and timely all the leadership team people have rocks three to seven rocks then you take that down to your ground to your middle management team. Most mid managers have one to three rocks and you get where everybody in the organization has at least one rock. Your meeting pulse 
We do meetings in three different ways. We do them as two day annuals, one day quarterlies, and then we do them as also a level 10 meeting. Again, it's about leaving your business on a 90 day window. There are five rules to a meeting. Five rules to an L10 meeting are same day, same time, start on time, end on time, and same agenda. So you need to be laser focused on doing those five rules to your meetings. And let me walk you through what we call the L10 meeting. The agenda starts with what we call good news or sometimes called segue. And what you're doing is you're sharing a little bit of yourself in your leadership team meeting. You're sharing personal best and professional best. Oftentimes people say, CJ, why do I have to share personal best? Well, reality is we spend more time with the people we work with than we do at home. And it's also our opportunity to get grounded. It's just an opportunity to get set and settled, sharing a little bit of good news and a little professional best with each other, and then we move forward. Scorecard is built, rocks have been built. So when you're going through your scorecard, you are sharing on track or off track, on track or off track. That's all you're sharing. And you can see it says reporting only. I call it drop it down. If something is off track, you drop it down to the issues list. Then you have rock review. You've built your rocks. And again, you need to report. Are they on track or off track? On track or off track? Anytime something is off track, you drop it down and you put it on the issues list. Customer and employee headlines is simply that, it's a headline. It's a quick status that I need to share something about a customer or an employee. If there's anything to discuss, we drop it down and we put it on the issues list. Then you go to your to-dos. Your to-dos are meant to be done in seven days and that is done or not done. Are they done or not done? Then we spend 60 minutes of our 90 minute meeting IDSing our issues, going through our issues, prioritizing them one, two, and three, identify, discuss, solve. That's one, done, solved. Number two, what's the issue? We identify, discuss, solve it making sure we're peeling back the onion, getting to the root cause. Everybody has an opportunity to say their piece and discuss, how should we move it forward? And then concluding and just solving, how are we gonna solve that for today to move it forward? You want to get as many issues as you can in that 60 minute time, but let me be open and honest, there are gonna be weeks that you only get through one or two issues, but they were so big and so meaty it was valuable time to spend it there. Then you have conclude, and what you do is you do is you do is you re as you recap, making sure everybody's walking out of the meeting knowing exactly what they committed to. You are sharing any cascading messages, so just making sure you're all on the same page if there's a message that goes to one employee or all employees, and then you rate your meetings. All our meetings are meant to be eight, nines, and tens. Be able to have same day, same time, start on time, end on time, and same agenda. We're doing that. We're being open, honest with each other, saying what needs to be said. Once a week, we are spending 90 precious minutes with our leadership team to solve our issues and move them forward. This, I always tell everyone, this is like the, if, if, if you do nothing else within EOS, this tool alone, the L10 meeting is the most powerful tool. A lot of my teams get frustrated in the beginning, but by three months in, they're like, this is the best thing ever. It's an amazing tool. That's love, the traction. Love, is your, go ahead. 
Oh, I was just going to say. I was just going to say. The meeting scroll. The meeting scroll. I'm sorry. The meeting tool. The meeting tool is. Oh yes. Yeah. I, seriously, it really. Yeah, I always say if there's no other tool you do, use that tool. It's amazing. So the traction component is rocks and meeting posts. And that is your six key components that make up EOS. Going to 52 is the slide. So it's pulling it all back together. What I'm doing. And that you want to be 100% strong, again, might be utopia, but you want to get to 80% strong in each one of the six key components. So you have five foundational tools. The five foundational tools is the VTO, Vision Traction Organizer. It's your accountability chart, rocks, level 10 meeting, scorecard. Those are your foundational tools. And then this is the Traction Library. Traction Library, there are five books now in the Traction Library to help you understand EOS, implement it on your own. We have an online tool called Basecamp you can use, or you can use an implementer. And that's it. Awesome. Awesome. Wow. 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 In in <laughs> <laughs> like I said, sometimes I talk fast. <laughs> No, that was wonderful. Yeah, that was wonderful. Okay, we're going to open it up to questions. So if anyone has any questions, put that in your in your And while we wait for while we wait for do you hear me echoing? Me echoing? I do a little bit. Yeah, I wasn't sure. I don't think it's me. Okay. Okay. Um, tell, um, us about, tell us about. Well, maybe I should. Well, maybe I should. Okay, give me a second. Okay, give me a second. Tell us about tell the rock and how the you help people set their quarterly rocks. Like, if people wanted help on how to do that. Sure. Okay. So, first of all, when I'm when I do it the first time. In a focus day, I mean, and, and I can go to process later, but what we're doing is we're just taking what are those big initiatives you have? Maybe it's hiring someone. Maybe you've decided you need to bring, do some research on an ERP system. It could be multiple different things, but rocks are those big things that you must get done. Oftentimes, rocks comes out of the goals you've built for the year. So we've built anywhere from three to seven big goals that we must get done. Sometimes there is two, three, even four rocks to make sure a big goal gets done. So what we're doing is I'm literally building that issues list, and we're kind of looking at the issues list. And so what are the big meaty things on here? And I need to now write a rock around it because it's going to take me anywhere from 60 to 90 days to get this done. So I teach teams how to write them smart and commit. I'll give you an example. When you think about hiring, for example, I always bucket hiring into recruiting, interviewing, hiring, and onboarding. So in a quarter's time, all you might only be able to do as a rock is I need to begin recruiting and interviewing to have two final candidates for a financial analyst or something like that for an account. And then the following quarter is to hire and onboard that accountant. Does that help? Does that answer the question? Yeah, absolutely. Definitely. To enable audio. Okay, let's see if any other let's see if any other questions came in. Okay, so, okay I'll, so I'll go ahead and I'll go ahead and ask mine. Sorry. Okay, we there? Yep. Okay. Um, help us, tell us about um, having an annual meeting and what your suggestion is for the format of an annual meeting where you're doing your goal setting. Who should you include in that meeting? And um, what's your suggestion for that? 
Great question. Um, so in our EOS process, we have quarterlies and annuals. So an annual for me is a two-day annual with a leadership team. So when you think of building your leadership team, you're thinking of those three main functions, sales and marketing, operations, finance. Sometimes an integrator owns two seats. He could own or she could own the finance seat and the integrator seat, and then whether or not you have a visionary or not, right? So you're mm -hmm. taking your leadership team. It's almost like thinking of it as a retreat. So you spend the first day and we work on team health. So we're working together to, to build our health as a team, doing a SWOT analysis, we're doing organizational checkup, we're doing um, really high level, we're working on the business. And then day two, we go back into the weeds and we build that one year plan, we write our new set of rocks for the next 90 days, and we tackle any and all other key issues that we believe that we need to tackle but after day one all my teams go out for a little team health dinner and everybody chooses to do it differently how they choose to do it some state you know some will actually go to resorts some do it in an office it just varies on what's best for them but the point is to get really you know together as a team having the same vision being a united front all working together for the greater good of the business. Okay, so speak to me for, because we have a number of companies, many companies on the call today. Some of them are smaller, some of them are a bit larger, but talk to, talk to the people on the call that have, that they are the implementer and the visionary, most probably they're, they're doing both of those roles. Mm -hmm. What would you suggest if they want to get started? Um, obviously the, the, IDS and the me weekly meeting is a great way to start um, implementing. But if somebody were to start doing something, um, what would you think is is a good next best thing after the the meeting implementer to do? Okay, so I have many teams where they are by the nature of how they are, they are a visionary by nature. Twenty ideas a week, you know. Sometimes a little ADD. That's that's just the nature of them, right? They have all the big relationships, but because of the size of the business, they um, are also the integrator. The integrator is the glue, the person who's harmoniously running the business. To get started with EOS, I mean, there's three ways you can implement EOS. You can read the book Traction, which is the how-to book, and then the, the backup book is the Get a Grip. The book written by Mike Payton and Gina Wickman, Ghetto Grip is a fable format that literally walks you through how to do all the sessions. And then the third way, you know, the, after you re read the books, or and you can join Basecamp. Basecamp is a monthly fee. You can join for a couple months, stop for a couple months. You can come on and off as often as you want. But there's videos and lessons in there to help you implement that way. And then otherwise you hire, you could look to hire an implementer. And currently we have 213 implementers internationally. Uh, I'm the head coach for EOS Worldwide. I have a coaching team of five, so I'm certainly more than willing and wanting to help anyone that would like to be connected to an implementer, I can do that and help. Um, to get started, you just have to think about how it's the five foundational tools is really what we what you need to do is work through getting those five foundational tools built, which is your VTO, which is like your two page business plan. Set your first set of rocks, set up your L10 meetings, build your scorecard and your accountability chart. Get those tools built. And again, what I teach, repetition is the mother of learning. So when I'm working with a team and getting them started, on average, it takes them two years to get this fully implemented. So just have patience and know that it's gonna take time. It's a journey to be able to walk through it all. Okay. 
I will experience share and say that the company scorecard I find is also a crucial tool um, because people need to know that things are being measured. Um, and I think just implementing the scorecard, thinking through the things that need to be measured, like we talked, you know, on this slide, um, I think is is also um, very effective in my experience. So, and I like the idea of putting the who, um, who is responsible for that those metrics. Um, that's 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 also helped yeah. me tremendously. So, I, I, and I, yeah, scorecard's amazing, and and like I, how I say it is, it does tell, it does take the emotion out, because the numbers always tell us a story. When a number is off track, it's oftentimes a people issue or a process issue. So you have to think about what are those key measurables that are giving you value. So I want you to think about the scorecard from an activity-based standpoint, okay? So it's like, if, if you want one new client a month, what are the activities that you need to do to get to that one new client a month? How many phone calls do you need to make? That's a measurable. How many meetings do you need to do? That's a measurable. To, if you do 10 meetings, how many of, proposals do you get to do? Then how many presentations do you get to do to net you the one new client a month? So always be thinking of your of your scorecard as an activity-based number is what you're looking for. So you're looking for proactive versus reactive. That's what we're doing with the scorecard. And the value to it is amazing. And yes, it actually creates a little bit of competition. And I don't mean yeah. just in a sales standpoint. I mean, it creates a level of accountability and competitiveness to make sure you're hitting your numbers. I certainly, being on the leadership team for Worldwide, do not want to show up saying off track on any of my numbers. Cool. Okay, this is good stuff. You said in the beginning you were going to share with us your uh, purpose or your... Sure. Sure. Proven process is what it was, and, and that's yeah. proven. Yeah, our proven process is the very last <laughs> slide there, and it's a little blurry. I noticed on my yeah. screen. Hopefully, it's clearer on yours. Um, everything that we do to work with an implementer starts with what we call the 90-minute meeting. It's us giving you, entrepreneurial company, 90 minutes of our time to walk you through the journey, which is a little bit of what I was doing today, to walk you through those six key components, to show you what it looks like to be running your business on EOS, because EOS is a business management system. The next step you choose to work with an implementer is the focus day. And the focus day is just that. I, I, if I come in and running a focus day, which actually I get to do tomorrow, is I'm going to teach five leadership traits first. What are the five key leadership traits to hitting the ceiling and breaking through those ceilings? Then I'm going to go through and right out of the gate, start working with the team on their accountability chart. So right out of the gate, I'm saying structure first, people second. What is the right structure for this business? And we build out that accountability chart. Then. We put names in seats for the leadership team. And I will be honest, there's times where I have seven people in the room and we built the structure and we've determined that the right structure for the business is only five leadership seats. So the two extra people in the room realize they still have a job, but they will not be on the leadership team. And that's just being open and honest because a lot of what we're teaching is transparency. So we get that accountability chart built, people walk out and they build it out all the way down to the ground. And then we build our first set of rocks to get you practicing and learning how to write rocks and hold yourself accountable to rocks. Then from there, I teach you the meeting pulse, how to run a great meeting. <laughs> We build your scorecard, and we get those foundational tools built. Then 30 days later, we go into what we call vision building day one. We spend a good part of the morning retooling all the tools that I, I taught the previous 30 days. 
retool those, and then start working on the eight questions, answering core values, core focus, tenure target, get those answered 30 days later, because everything I'm teaching is time-based learning. So I'm teaching you time-based learning. That's why we do it this way. And repetition is the mother of learning. So in that vision building day two, we're making sure we got our tools on track, they're running well for us, working well for us, and then we answer the rest of the eight questions, and then you have completed your two-page business plan. You get, you know, we've been building foundation in those first three days, and I'm sending you out to go move into execution mode, and we go to quarterlies, and then a two-day annual, depending upon the company and when their fiscal years and how that fits in. So that's how it looks to work with an implementer. Sometimes it's great to have the coach in the room that's walking you through that. I always say I'm a teacher, I'm a facilitator, and I'm a coach is what my role as an implementer is. Does that answer everything? <laughs> yes, very, very cool. I, I love all this stuff. I'm 100% into it. Um, my team, some of the people on the, on my team are on the call, so they know that um, I'm all about this. I think now they're starting to understand why I bother them as much as I do. Um, I think it's, you know, definitely the foundation for any business. Um, it, it could be applied towards anything, uh, the COS system. So I'm proof that it works, and I'm glad that we got the opportunity to share it together. Um, just to let everybody know, we're uh, next quarter. We're going to focus on people, and I will be emailing you with our next mastermind date. And um, tentative date is August 8th, but I will be confirming it with you. Some recommended reading for people: I like the Five Dysfunctions of a Team by Patrick Lencioni and Who by Jeff Smart and Randy Street. Um, kind of the uh, more under, more readable version of top grading. I'm sure, CJ, you have your recommended reading if you want to share with a group, just generally speaking, what are some of the... Well, I'm going to... Yeah, I, I happen, happy to. Um, so, Traction Library, great books, help you run your business better. I am... Um, I use Patrick Lencioni's books on a regular basis. We use those as content inside of what I teach with EOS. So Five Dysfunctions of a Team is a wonderful book from Patrick Lencioni. Any of his work is amazing. There is one book out there that I think really resonates well with a lot of my teams that ties to EOS. It's called um, Essentialism, which is Greg McGowan. And essentialism is just really helping you to think real, simple results and not overcomplicating. Because at the end of the day, I always say, we're all just a bunch of crazy humans. So, how do we work together to be able to make things work better? And essentialism is a great book that I found helps me a lot. Okay, that's great. I'm going to put that on my reading list so uh but thank you again cj i can't thank you enough for your time i'm sure i sent out a survey for everybody to will receive as soon as the window closes you'll get a couple questions please respond to that so that we know how to continue to provide value for future sessions i'm going you'll be receiving a recording uh in an email so in case you missed anything um, you'll be able to watch the recording and feel free to reach out to myself or CJ if you're interested in getting an implementer or if you want to learn more about uh, EOS implementation. Um, I'm sure CJ would be happy to help you. Okay. I'd love Thank you so much, everybody. Yeah, I'd love the opportunity. Thank you so much. Okay. Have a great rest of the day, everybody.